Good afternoon. Welcome to the Coronavirus Initiative. Uh, pleased to see uh, all of you continuing to show up here uh, during these crazy times uh, as, as, uh, as things are so disrupted. Um, I do, do, do appreciate you taking the time here. Uh, I am Bill Watson Canning, I'm president of University Consultants of America. Uh, if you have attended any of our previous webinars, you might have seen me uh, speaking. Uh, but today's topic uh, we're going to be talking about is how to work with your high school college counselor. Um, this is a fairly, uh, as, uh, as our webinars go, this is one of our shorter ones. Uh, I could almost summarize it as work with your high school guidance counselor. Uh, it's, it's, it's fairly important. And I say that even as uh, somebody who's an independent consultant, um, we work as a supplement or a complement uh, to the work that high school guidance counselors do. Uh, tremendously important to, to, to build that relationship. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> uh, sort of the, the relationship that you will be building with that counselor. Uh, so uh, depending on what year you are in uh, and how your school operates, you may or may not have even met your college counselor yet. Uh, some schools will assign a college counselor to a student, you know, right from uh, the time ninth grade begins. Uh, in other situations, it uh, doesn't really happen until halfway through 11th grade. Uh, so if you're currently in 10th grade, it might not have been assigned to you yet. Uh, usually, uh, the work with that counselor is going to pick up in earnest uh, kind of in January of 11th grade. Uh, some of that's just for a completely practical reason. Uh, prior to that, uh, counselors are swamped uh, with work for their 12th graders. Uh, most application deadlines are done by January 1st. Uh, the given year. Those deadlines may adjust this year, we shall see. Uh, but, but basically, traditionally, January 1st is the last big deadline date. There are a few that stretch past that. Uh, but uh, part of that, it's kind of hard for a counselor to focus too much on younger students. Uh, so in January, they tend to kick off work with the 11th graders. Uh, so you'll have some meetings uh, <clears throat> with the counselor at that point as sort of talk stuff through. Uh, in terms of what your counselor is actually going to be responsible for, uh, there are a few things that only the counselor can do for you. Uh, the counselor is going to be the one who makes sure that all those things like test scores and transcripts uh, get to the schools you're applying to. Uh, and that transcript is also going to include the school report uh, so that a college can actually make sense of uh, what your transcript means in context. Uh, at uh, some schools, a 3.9 GPA might have you at the very, very top of the class, and at other schools, uh, it might have you somewhere in the middle because uh, everybody's taking so many weighted classes that they shoot way above. Uh, so, a counselor is the one who needs to put some context uh, behind your behind your transcript, so the college can understand. Okay, wait, are we talking about a student who's at the again at the very top of the class, midpoint of the class, uh, what have you? Uh, the counselor is also going to prepare a uh, recommendation letter uh, for you. Now, this is different uh, from uh, the other recommendation letters that you might get. Um, the most important recommendation letters for you uh, will be your teacher recommendations. Teachers have a chance to see you in context, uh, generally speaking, every day. Uh, even in these sort of uh, crazy times, uh, they're still uh, interacting with you on a, on a more regular basis. Uh, so the teachers are actually able to speak to an incredibly important human side uh, of the application that we talk about when we talk about the holistic system. Uh, there's a lot of objective information when it comes to your grades, your test scores, to the extent you can take tests right now, uh, even objective information when they look at your extracurriculars. Uh, you know, you kind of either are winning an award and have a leadership position or you know, not, uh, you're either on the team that and, you know, went to the state championships with a current win game for four years. Uh, but when we get to the more subjective elements of the application, as the university tries to visualize what you might be like on a campus for four years, that's where the recommendation letters become so important. And the teacher recommendations become important there. Uh, now, the counselor also has to write a recommendation. Uh, and the reason, one of the reasons for that is uh, the counselor actually has to write a recommendation letter for every student in the class. Uh, so uh, while a teacher might just uh, be asked by, well, hopefully it's only asked by students who have a good relationship with that teacher, although strange things happen. Uh, try to only ask teachers you have a good relationship with. 
uh, the counselor is writing for, uh, for absolutely everybody. Uh, now, uh, depending on your school, uh, your counselor may be carrying a huge volume of students or a lighter volume. Uh, you know, super exclusive private schools sometimes can afford to have a lighter volume. Uh, oftentimes, public schools, you can find a counselor has three, 400 students to manage. Uh, so schools are aware that counselor may not have gotten to know you personally on a deep level. Um, so to that extent, uh, the counselor recommendation letter may not be viewed uh, as importantly as the teacher recommendation letter. But here's the trick. If you've got a counselor letter that actually does show uh, that they know you personally and has some good personal story to tell about you, uh, that can really be an asset for you because you're not going to be like the other 399 students in the class who don't have that relationship and who, who don't have uh, sort of special information coming in uh, from the council recommendation letter. Uh, so if nothing else, uh, you know, good reason to get to know your counselor uh, better that way. Um, the council can also speak to uh, any unusual situations uh, in your record. Um, we would all like it if we had uh, absolutely perfect uh, scores and everything we did and we never missed a day of anything and uh, you know, won every award there was. Uh, but uh, reality interferes. Um, you, know, you grow up a lot over the course of high school. If you were suspended in 10th grade for disciplinary reason um, and it has to go in the record, the council can also uh, explain that. Um, and can either explain in a positive way or in a well, it can either explain it in a way that uh, puts a more positive spin on things or not. Um, and it's not just suspensions, I just use that as an example because we certainly uh, see disciplinary issues. Um, if there is <clears throat> some way that your uh, work suffered particularly uh, at a time because, uh, well, right now, obviously there's some emergencies everywhere, but if there was some sort of family emergency, what have you, um, you may want your counselor uh, to speak to some of that uh, so that it is, uh, so it overlaps with uh, what you may or may not be saying in your own application. On the other hand, we've also seen situations where, uh, you know, there might have been a disciplinary issue and the school decides they don't have to report it at all, uh, that it uh, was something that was did not rise to the level of the permanent record, uh, does not have to go uh, be reported to the school, in which case you're going to want to find out from your counselor. So you don't waste a lot of time. Uh, and the additional information section of your application, talking about uh, you know the detention you got as a sophomore, and nobody cares. Um, so uh, again, uh, counsel can sort of speak to all sorts of things, and, and has to speak uh, to, to certain things. Uh, but you know the big thing you know, that your counselor has uh, to offer you. Uh, number one, the counselor has an aerial view of your entire class. So the counselor actually under, does understand, like I say, where you fit in uh, with the other students who are applying uh, from your year. Uh, the other thing that the counselor may well have is relationships uh, with particular schools. Uh, so uh, the council represents you, uh, but the council also uh, is representing the school uh, to universities. And it happens every year, and it's, it's part of the process. Uh, you know, admissions officers talk to counselors. For one thing, they want to encourage students to apply uh, to schools, uh, but they also want to sort of get a sense of students from the counselor. Uh, and uh, if uh, you have a counselor who's very much in your corner uh, and you're applying to a top school, uh, that can also be an asset uh, for a counselor to sort of say, oh, this student is actually, uh, you know, truly one of the finest maths, you know, truly the finest math student we've had in the past eight years at the school, um, that might actually carry some weight uh, as opposed to just sort of saying an exceptional student. Um, so having a counselor in your corner. Now the counselor is of course <clears throat> not entirely your advocate uh, either. The counselor does have to represent the entire school. Uh, so, uh, and, and the counselor has to maintain good relationships with uh, all the schools that he or she has those relationships with. Uh, so your counselor's not gonna lie on your behalf. Um, and, and you know, your counselor uh, wants his or her words to carry weight uh, when they talk to those schools. Uh, so um, just understand that the counselor is, uh, ad 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 has multiple things to advocate for. Uh, and if you are uh, absolutely determined that you want to apply to the school, the counselor's saying maybe not, um, just understand that 
uh, that might be where the, where the clash is and, and you need to advocate for yourself there. Um, so let's talk about what, what's important for you to do uh, when working with your counsel. Uh, number one, I've already sort of mentioned, uh, just get to know them. Uh, for God's sake, please go to the meetings uh, that they have. Uh, and, and not just the sort of general informational things, but you know, the one-on-ones. Uh, make sure you use those as valuable time. Uh, but even outside of meetings, take time to keep your counsel informed. Um, yes, they're gonna get in, I mean, whenever testing restarts, um, the SAT right now is planning for August. Um, yes, the counsel is gonna get notified when test scores come out. But there's no reason you can't sort of let the counsel know as well. Hey, all right, I got my math two subject test back. Here's the score. Um, let them know about uh, schools you've been researching. Um, if schools, if campuses reopen at some point and you're able to visit, let them know about that. Uh, but you can also do a lot of research right now uh, on schools, even without visiting. In fact, that was uh, just one thing. Yesterday with some representatives from uh, I think Dartmouth and a couple of uh, other IVs, uh, and, and they really are stepping up their, their kind of virtual stuff uh, that they're doing to support. Uh, students trying to get information about the school. Uh, so if you are looking at a few schools uh, and there's something that just really pops for you, or you're working in a school, you're thinking, hey, I thought I was going to love uh, such and such school, but ugh, uh, you know, didn't like it at all once I saw the stuff. That's important to let the counselor know uh, so they can help you develop uh, an overall application strategy. Uh, potential majors, uh, things change all the time, uh, you know, at, 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 during the high school years. Uh, you know, the, the student who thought she was going to be a chemistry major uh, suddenly discovers that now it's all about photography. Let your counselor know uh, so they're not trying to steer you towards those STEM schools when you are suddenly uh, pursuing a fine arts degree. Uh, and all of that kind of news uh, you want to let your, uh, let your counselor be aware of. Uh, and Conversely, uh, listen to your counselor uh, as your counselor tries to help you develop strategies. Um, your counselor might know if there are going to be three other students uh, applying to uh, some school that uh, you know, might not be your dream school, but it's a bit of a reach and you want to see uh, and might be able to sort of say, hey, but you know, look at this other one. Um, so do, do listen to the strategies that the counselor is suggesting. And counselors very much have an interest in making sure you have some good options ahead of you. Uh, they know as well as anybody else uh, that, you know, by all means, you know, if you want to apply to an Ivy League school or an Ivy equivalent school, um, you know, go for it. But nobody's a short thing at those schools. Uh, but let's, you know, look for that blend. Uh, and every, any counselor uh, is, is going to be uh, looking to help you build that, uh, that, that, that blend. Um, now, uh, a few things to be aware of. Uh, first of all, these are human beings. Uh, they're gonna have bad days. Uh, so try and show some patience with that. Uh, they have an insane amount of work to do, especially come fall from 12th grade. Uh, so uh, please do not uh, have your counselor every 15 minutes for a response uh, on a question that might be super important to you, but does not actually have to be answered in the next 15 minutes. Uh, show, 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 show a little grace there. Um, also be responsive to your counselor's deadlines. This is going to be uh, an issue for uh, many of you, uh, many students come fall. Uh, I was a high school student once, believe it or not. Uh, and I, I well remember that, okay, uh, you know, the paper's due uh, November 1st. So, you know, October 30th, I'll figure out what I'm writing on and I'll write about the 31st or something. Um, doesn't work uh, for college applications, uh, especially because your counselor will want to see uh, at least uh, a lot of the material you're working on. Uh, so just because an application says it's due November 1st or November 15th or January 1st or whatever the date is, um, your counselor may go ahead and say, yeah, but I want to see your stuff by October 10th. Get it to them by October 10th. Uh, work with those deadlines. <clears throat> they are there to help you. They are there to help the counselor manage his or her workload as well. Uh, but the more you can get ahead of things, actually the stronger uh, situation you will be in. And look, there are advantages to you as well uh, in getting an application in uh, a little earlier than the deadline. Now, be your own advocate, as I said, uh, you know, counselors with their workloads can also uh, you know, make mistakes on occasion. 
uh, if your counselor is trying to uh, get your application into a school that is a binding early decision, uh, meaning that if you apply and you are accepted, you must go, and it's not your top choice school, uh, push back. Say, hey, no, I don't want Georgetown getting my application before November 1st. I don't want to be in the early pool. I want to be in the regular pool. Um, so, you know, there are, there are times when you might have to push back. Um, but, but do understand that your counselors have uh, those, those, those deadlines in there for a reason. Um, if your school has more than one counselor, uh, either because the school is so large or it's pretty much always why the school have multiple counselors is that are large enough to meet them, uh, have, however many students they're assigning for a counselor, um, it is still worth trying to get to know that there's, there's always going to be a head counselor. Um, trying to get to know the head counselor. Now don't go around the back or over the head of your assigned counselor, um, just loop in the head counselor. Hey, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Smith, I uh, just wanted to let you know, I had a great meeting uh, last week with uh, Ms. Jones and then, you know, we talked about these three things. Um, or I'm really, uh, you know, uh, now I have my heart set on uh, applying to the University of North Carolina and I want you to know. This is useful information for that head counselor to have because that head counselor is actually the one who is most likely to have the strong relationships uh, with, with some of those schools uh, that I mentioned earlier uh, and can advocate for you either in the regular pool or even as uh, we've been seeing with some of our 12th graders the past few weeks, uh, wait lists. Nobody likes to think about being on a wait list, uh, but it happens. And uh, having the head counselor in your corner who can say, yeah, uh, you know, Vanderbilt, you know, you, you waitlisted this kid. Uh, it really is his top choice. He's really going to show up in Nashville if you've met him. Uh, can be a tremendous asset to you. Uh, so do get to know uh, that head counselor. Uh, I'm just going to close uh, by you know, sort of telling a quick story uh, about the, the student we had a couple of years ago um, who I was a little frustrated because uh, he'd been assigned a, a counselor uh, who uh, you know, it was the spring of his uh, 11th grade and, and that counselor was going to be going on maternity leave, uh, which, you know, is a good thing, places to have an offer. Uh, but, you know, you can also understand uh, that, hey, it's the spring of my junior year and, and, and what's going to happen if, uh, if this counselor leaves. He said, student, don't, don't worry about that. Go home right now. And uh, I, I actually, I think the council had gone uh, on uh, maternity leave, or maybe been, yeah, it actually, actually had the baby. Uh, go on, uh, go home right now, and I want you to. We want you to send uh, an email uh, congratulating uh, the council on on, uh, on her new baby. Uh, and uh, he was the only student who did anything like that. Uh, who actually reached out to her uh, at that uh, at that moment, because uh, very few eleventh graders would think to do that. Uh, and uh, it actually, uh, that, that gesture put the counselor uh, in his corner. Uh, because then uh, what happened uh, was, uh, you know, and then you know, he also you know, welcomed her back when she came back to campus and really sort of made an effort, a genuine effort uh, to, to get to know the, 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 the counselor and, and uh, understand her. And uh, he gave us a call at one point in the fall of 12th grade to say, uh, I got, two interesting emails um, just now. And I said, okay, well, what was in the emails? I said, well, uh, the first was congratulating me on being nominated uh, for uh, the Moorhead Scholarship, uh, which is a very prestigious scholarship from the University of North Carolina. Uh, and uh, so, well, that's fantastic. Uh, clearly your, your school has to nominate you for it. And, and, and he said, that's not the, the interesting email. The interesting email is the second one saying, all of your materials for the Moorhead have now been received. Uh, and he hadn't filled anything out. Uh, the counselor had actually uh, gone ahead and, uh, you know, uh, done all the paperwork that was necessary uh, for him to be uh, you know, listed there for the Moorhead, uh, as I say. Um, now, he did not wind up getting the Moorhead. Uh, he had to settle for going to a little school in New Haven called Yale. Uh, so, uh, which, you know, obviously the student had uh, all sorts of qualifications. Uh, that made him a strong candidate for a school like that. Uh, but you can trust me that having a counselor in his corner um, was a definite asset uh, during, uh, during that whole situation. Uh, so, you know, uh, recognizing that uh, counselors have a lot on their plates and uh, you know, 
Bill Summerall for independent consultants, uh, of course, uh, who can uh, sort of give you individualized attention. Uh, we never want uh, to be in a situation where looking into independent consultant uh, as a substitute uh, for a relationship with a high school counselor. Um, it is still happening right now. I've got students uh, contacting me saying, hey, I've got this weird thing on my transcript. You know, I've been accepted and I took a send in my deposit because they're obviously 12th graders. Uh, but you know, what do I do about this? Uh, you know, schools have, you know, I, I need this transcript being submitted. So I'll talk to your counselor, uh, your high school counselor. That, that, that's the only person who can do that. That's the person who also has the relationship with the school. And uh, especially during all this COVID craziness uh, where it might be difficult to get something on official letterhead of the seal, um, it's gonna be the counselor uh, who's, who's able to advocate for you there with the school. Um, so, as I said, uh, you know, this is not necessarily a topic that needs uh, 45 minutes of depth, uh, but not every topic related to college admissions does. Uh, I just say, um, even, uh, and especially, uh, even actually in these times when we're all, you know, home offices uh, and figuring out how to navigate these things, it might be a good time to reach out to your counselor anyway, uh, and just sort of let them know how things are progressing, especially if you're in the 11th grade uh, right now. Uh, so that is uh, this week's webinar. Uh, it gets out a little earlier than uh, most weeks. Uh, but thank you, uh, as always, for attending. Um, I believe next week's topic is, uh, no, I don't have it in front of me. I think it's uh, uh, the unique opportunities, uh, some of the different, uh, basically how to research a school, uh, unique opportunities at US colleges. Um, if I'm wrong about that topic, which every so often I am, uh, it will definitely be in the newsletter uh, that goes out tomorrow. Uh, but uh, thank you all again uh, for attending. I hope everybody's keeping uh, safe and healthy. Uh, wish you the best. And go ahead and shoot the council an email before dinner. All right. Thank you. Everybody have a good week.